Some really interesting headlines from the OPEC monthly report. Tina, can you give us the, the, the lowdown on what actually OPEC is thinking right now? Sure. It, it was interesting, as you said. They, they, they curbed their demand outlook for 2019 just a smidge, but it was enough to draw some interest because, uh, you know, if you're talking about curbing demand going forward for 2019, they're also talking about added supply coming in from non-OPEC and non-OPEC ally nations. What you're essentially seeing then is an acknowledgement of a loss in market share. And if you're OPEC, that's not really what you're trying to accomplish with the production cuts that went into effect in January. Tina, how does that sit side by side by the, the latest Khalid al comments which have come out, which seem to suggest that OPEC is, um, or Saudi at least, is stepping up and deliver maybe more cuts than the OPEC Plus deal had prescribed? Right. Well, we did see overcompliance, if that's a word, uh, in last year's production cuts and, and the figures going from there. Uh, so far for January, the report indicated it was about 86 percent compliance. Uh, and Saudi Arabia is basically accounting for the majority of that compliance. And what was interesting about the report that we heard from the FT was that the Saudi oil minister is essentially saying that they'll be at 9.8 million barrels a day by March. If that's true, that would be the lowest output level for them since around early 2015. It also represents 500,000 barrels a day more than they promised to cut. So you can see that the Saudis are quite serious about trying to maintain prices, and you've seen the oil price today respond in kind. Right. We're higher here for barrel of WTI by about 2%, now 53.37 a barrel. What did OPEC say about the U.S., and what does it portend for the U.S.? It continues to see higher output from the U.S. And I think we're also looking for some numbers today from the Energy Information Administration here in the U.S. about what its outlook will be going forward for U.S. production uh, and whether or not they also are going to curb demand. We have the IEA tomorrow, not to give you too many acronyms, the IEA is putting out its <laughs> monthly report tomorrow. Uh, and we'll be, I think that's a more conservative group in terms of the oil demand going forward. I don't expect them to do any kind of big cut. They tend to wait until the IMF moves before they actually cut. But yes, if you're talking about production outside of OPEC, the U.S. is a major concern. Tina, are Gulf refiners still struggling with access to some of the more sour grade crudes as a result of Venezuela? We have definitely seen the price of the heavier grades of oil go up. And that's not only because of Venezuela, it's also because we've seen the output cuts in, uh, in Alberta. We've seen the Saudis, uh, we have reporting saying they're specifically targeting the U.S. in terms of what, where they're cutting their shipments. So what was interesting is we saw the Chinese overnight uh, selling uh, that heavier grade at a $5 premium. Normally it sells at a discount to WTI. And that indicates that there is some tightening in the market. And then if you look at Venezuela specifically, look, the, re the report report today indicates they're at they have a 19th consecutive month of production declines and they're at they're producing around the level that they were in the 1940s this does not yet show the effect of the US sanctions on PDVSA so I think in February that number could go even lower